Well, North County parents are suing state leaders over the prolonged school closures. Joining us now with more on the issue is co-director of the Carlsbad Chapter of the Parent Association, Scott Davison. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Lauren. Well, thanks for joining us. You know, reading the details of uh, the 11 parents involved in this lawsuit and the, the harrowing stories of what their children have been going through throughout this lockdown, both psychologically, physically, emotionally, I mean, it's, it's really disturbing. And so if you can, can you describe what these parents are, are hoping for and why they think that it's the schools being shut down that's led to some of these tragedies? Yeah, and, and you can see, you know, when you read these stories and there's, there's you know, hundreds, thousands more like them. You see the, the study that came out yesterday that showed that, you know, among teens, mental health, you know, crisis issues are up over 100 percent, sometimes even more. Um, and, and so these parents and these students are at their wits end and they uh, and it's it's been very clearly, you know, correlated to, you know, school closures and the fact that they've been stuck at home. We're on day 355 of, uh, of my student being stuck at home in a bedroom alone all day without any interaction with peers, with teachers and without the ability to learn in person. And so it's not just an academic issue, it's a mental health issue. And so, you know, really our, our you know, one of our main arguments is that, you know, these uh, California students are uh, guaranteed, you know, a right to an education by the state of California and they're not getting that, you know? And, and so that's, you know, one of the goals of the lawsuit is to return, you know, all of these students, especially these secondary students who've been, you know, locked out of the classroom for almost a year now to the classroom as soon as possible to allow them to come back to full-time five, five day a week in-person learning. And so on what grounds do these parents have a, a case in this lawsuit against state leaders? Yeah, and so the you know the main argument that we're making is that the state uh, you know basically invented new rules in January um, to prevent many of these school districts from reopening when you know we were on the cusp of of doing so that you know our our school district here in Carlsbad had spent you know seven million dollars uh, on you know upgraded equipment on extra staffing preparing for probably one of the safest reopening plans in the state of California. And then, you know, with a, a week to go, the state came up with new arbitrary rules that, you know, weren't based on the scientific evidence of what it took to reopen schools safely and, and wasn't really based on any, you know, need for new rules that we had shown that schools all over the country, even in the state of California, had reopened safely. And so the state just, you know, kind of invented new rules in January and all of a sudden these school districts you know, had to indefinitely postpone their reopening plans. And so again, you see, you know, the disappointment um, that these kids are, are going through every time, you know, a school district plans a reopening and then has to postpone it is uh, is is only contributing to, to the harm. And so we think we can show a judge that these rules, you know, don't make any sense. They're not based on scientific data. They're not based on the CDC recommendations that all schools should be open regardless of the, the tier that you're in. Uh, and, and that kind of thing. And so we, we think that uh, a judge will agree with us. It sounds a lot like the argument that uh, is involved in a case we've recently seen with the let them play effort uh, as, as far as trying to get students, uh, athletes back on the field. It, it sounds like that's a very similar argument. Is that something, did you seek any counsel from people who have gone through that lawsuit? Uh, do, you, do you know of any other districts or parents who've succeeded in similar efforts as yours? Yeah, and, and you're right. There are some very similar arguments there, kind of under, under what we would consider an equal protection uh, argument that, you know, all students should be allowed the same, you know, right to come back to, to on-campus in-person learning. And, and what we see with the state's rules, the ones in January specifically, is that they allow some elementary school students to come back and then they prohibit all middle school and all high school students from coming back. And even the deal that the governor reached with the legislature yesterday you know, effectively does the same thing. It only provides some students in some grades with the opportunity to come back to campus and it prevents, you know, other students that are in exactly the same situation, you know, high school students and middle school students. And in fact, you know, we would argue the high school and middle school students are in uh, a more dire need of coming back, you know, sooner because of these mental health issues that are really only seen in middle and high school students. And, uh, and so yeah, we're making the same argument that there's no reason, there's nothing, no data or science showing that schools at the high school or middle school level can't be safely reopened, just like at the elementary school level. 
And so, you know, we want all students and all grades to have that same opportunity. And, and you're certainly not saying that there can't be an option for parents to keep their students at home if they feel that that's best for them either. You're, you're really just hoping for an option. And that's exactly right. That's what we've hoped for this whole time is that, you know, since the summer, we've provided any student who didn't want to return to classroom to the classroom for for health reasons, the opportunity to stay home and learn online and learn virtually. And at this point, we have, you know, cameras set up in all of our classrooms where the students can, mm -hmm. you know, literally listen in on you know their same teachers and their same classes. Um, without really missing a beat. And so if they if they need to, anybody who needs to can stay home. You know, at this point, we're about to have all of our teachers vaccinated by the end of the month. So the, the risk of coming to school will be very minimal for anybody who wants to come to school and anybody who really feels like there's still a risk certainly has that opportunity to, to stay home and, and continue to learn remotely. Scott Davison, thank you so much for the time this morning. I appreciate yeah. it. And I hope you'll uh, keep us updated on, on your efforts in the lawsuit. Thank you. And I, I just would also like to say, uh, because there were four plaintiffs in this case who had children that had devised detailed plans uh, to harm themselves, that if you do see signs that are concerning, that you contact uh, your local doctor or help, the National Suicide Prevention Line is 1-800-273-8255. Uh, uh, just very important to mention. Still ahead.